All right, so I got this interesting question from one of our viewers. If you could shape a qualified, valuable UX designer, what would be the skill sets that you feel make them a resource to the company? And what I'm going to use to answer this is well-known framework to T-shape or M-shape or X-shape or I-shaped people. If you haven't heard about this, it's a super interesting way to look at the skills and the development and what makes certain people proficient in one scenario but not the others. It was first introduced by McKinsey and Company in her consulting efforts, but it was popularized by IDOs Tim Brown and David Guess. So the basic premise to put people in these shapes is to understand exactly how deep or how broad is their expertise. If we would draw out a T on the screen, you're going to see that the first, the top bit is the cross-discipline expertise. And the arrow down making that base of the T is the deep discipline expertise. This would make it a T-shaped skills. And for example, if you would be a generalist in end-to-end -end UX, you would know specific skill sets in research and design and prototyping and UIs and visual design and let's say hardware and signage and service design and everything in between. You might end up with minus prolonged generalist, but in reality, it never works that way. You tend to develop and become stronger in certain skills, but not the other. So let's say if you come from graphic design background, you, that T is gonna be based on one of the skills which is super visual oriented. So one of them is gonna be longer than the rest ultimately. And this is obviously visual representation of it. In reality, it might be skilled in multiple different areas and you might be spending, I don't know, 20 different years focusing on two specific skill sets like research and visual design. Then those two would make you an M-shaped all of a sudden. Now, the complexity comes in this case when you have the X-shaped or P-shaped. There is a lot of different shapes ultimately. You don't need to worry about that yet. Ultimately, the X shape means that you just cross disciplinary across the board and you might connect different dots. And it's more relevant to, I guess, very advanced people who are, you know, have been there and done that for multiple decades in their career so that we can connect something like AI and experience design, be a thought leader, so to speak, in their areas of expertise. These things tend to morph. But let's say if Nicholas, our viewer who asked that question, would be a T-shaped individual at the junior level, this is how his skills could look like. And what I like to do when I try to explain these things, I try to overlay it with these horizontal lines showing the progression for each of the skills for different environments. So for example, the first band could be that you are just a trainee at a certain skill set. The second band, you, it could be that you're already proficient and you're professional, meaning you're getting paid to do that specific skill or that task at the professional level. Nobody bats an eye. You're almost like a go-to person for that specific skill set. Then you might have something like a maestro or a master level skill set. You know that thing inside out. You're not just a professional, but you are the one defining how that thing is done. You are the one who's making that skill set. You are the one who is basically shaping what it is. Now, in certain scenarios, in different companies, these bands are going to shift and morph and be looked very differently. So for example, if you would apply for a user researcher role at a startup, that T-shape might morph and look very different than corporate environment or scale up in between somewhere like a mid-sized organization. A lot of firms are focusing on hiring T-shapes because T-shapes mean that you know you know the generalist end-to-end -end skills which are required. You might have soft skills and hard skills, but you're going to be very good at fitting that Lego, that missing gap in the actual organization of that specific skill, because we might be lacking something like a user researcher and your T is so strong on the user research that you can pull that card and slot in and say, this is what I can add to your organization. And so, for example, right off the bat, if you just had a few months of experience and you already filled in that generalist band of different skill sets, now you need to hone some sort of skills, like, for example, user research would be definitely one. 
one. Information architecture would be another one to focus on. Product design and maybe prototyping, interaction design, the visual side of it would be another one. So maybe three areas which you must kind of hone and focus. Naturally, if you focus on one, you cannot spend as much time on the other one. So your, again, T expands on the specific side. And if you overlap that with your regional needs, for example, if you are going to be in developing tech industries and developing tech world, there is a massive need for UX UI designers. What does that mean? The bias is going to be for the UI and product design instead of user research. Therefore, the logical step for you to be to evolve that T with a UI design bias. But consider that for the growth and being actually like a market ready UX designer, you're going to need to develop the user research and many other other skills. So just because you entered the market of, let's say, that T-shape of UI design, now you're going to need to figure out how to evolve and hone your skills over time. Over decades, you're going to develop multiple T's where you're going to be an M-shape, an X-shape, and you can basically pull different cards and rewrite your resume, focusing either on research or on design. You know, it depends how differently you want to skin it or maybe on leadership. And you almost can have multiple different resumes and apply for different roles because you're good at a lot of different things. I hope this is useful. If so, smash that like button, leave a comment down below. And on that note, I'll see you next time.